welcome to Crystalline. For those unaware, the Ace Academy aficionados among you may have spot this out already, but this is the developer's next game, which was released on Early Access, I believe, at midnight. And unfortunately, with the onslaught of new games that came out this week alone, I'm not going to be able to cover this in detail. It's an Early Access, and I will come back to it later. For those of you on the fence wanting to pick it up, find out what it's about, this video is for you. So, let's go in here. First name, Hero. And I almost just put last twice. So there we go. Hmm. Does this place look familiar by any chance? The library is far more quiet than I would have expected at this time of night. The only sound is the gentle hum of the air conditioner. Whoa, that was too close. I blink my eyes wide open, then I stifle a yawn as I stretch to wake myself up. Focus. Finals are just around the corner, so I can't afford to slack off. Glancing around me, I notice that I'm the only person left in the study cubicles. It is getting pretty late. I'll go back to the dorms as soon as I finish this last chapter. I flip through the book. Only a few more pages to go. I can do this. Stealing my resolve, I refocus on my textbook. The words on the screen blur together as my eyelids grow heavy. I fight to keep my eyes open, but my lids continue to droop. I'll just rest them for a second. Something jerks me awake and my eyes blink open. A bright light illuminates the room, blinding me until all I can see is a stark whiteness. I throw my arm over my eyes to shield it from the light. After a few seconds pass, the light seems to dim, but it doesn't feel like the same fluorescent glow of the library bulbs. Carefully, I unwind and bring my arm down, squinting at a pale blue sky. A mild breeze tussles my hair. Blades of grass tickle my neck as they wave in the wind. Where am I? I'm about to push myself up off the ground when something pops into view. A round blue blob with two dark eyes blinks at me. Polly? It bobs slightly, like pudding. Oh. When it notices my stare, it opens its small mouth and takes a dainty bite out of my nose. Hey. The creature's bite doesn't sting, but feels like a cool splash of water. Before it can take another, I scramble to my feet. The creature tumbles off my head and falls to the ground. Once it lands, it shakes itself off with a gelatinous tremble, clearly unfazed. It hops onto my foot and opens its mouth again, but I quickly shake it off. It rolls off my foot and into the dirt, then rests itself again. It pounces and continues to watch me, but doesn't attempt another bite. What is that thing? It cocks its head as if wondering the same about me. That's unsettling. I take in the scattering of trees around me. Their tall branches kiss the sky. There's a winding dirt trail which weaves through the trees. As I follow with my gaze, I see smoke billowing out of thatched roofs of a village in the far distance. Where am I? The last thing I remember is studying at the library. That's it. I must have fallen asleep and I am now dreaming. I glance down at the blue creature. What? At my response, it leaps up. Whoa. I scramble away from it, and it lands back on the ground with a soft thud. That thing can jump pretty high. I need to be careful. What's your deal? It leaps again, and I again retreat. Stop that. I dodge as it jumps, then I begin to run. To my surprise, the blob keeps pace with a series of nimble bounces. Seriously, stay back. It musters up one long leap, and I turn around the corner of a sturdy tree to avoid it. I don't notice the other person until too late. We painfully collide, and I lose my balance before toppling over. Fortunately, my hands catch myself, protecting my fall. When I open my eyes, I see a woman. Her eyes are scrunched shut, and her mouth is twisted in a grimace. Her long blonde hair is splayed out around her. As she lets out a small groan, she blinks open her eyes and fixes her gaze on me. 
talk. Where am I? Huh? She still seems a bit dazed. Maybe I was being too vague. What are you doing here? Looking for the... She blinks away the confusion from her eyes as her voice trails off. Then she clears her throat. <clears throat> Do you mind? Oh. I push myself back up to my feet. She gingerly pushes herself off the ground and winces. Are you alright? I'm okay. Poi? The creature is right by my foot again. Are you serious? You're still here? The woman looks surprised. A pongo! Pongo? Jeez, all that Pokemon last night is making me see things. Poke a man? Poi poi? The pongo bobs up and down by my foot and notches me with its head. Oh. He's a cute one! He? Yeah, you can tell by the shape of his eyes. Oh. I think he wants you to hold him. It's trying to eat me, woman. I doubt that's what he wants. He tried to eat me earlier. Oh, don't be silly. He's harmless. The woman leans down and reaches for the pongo, but he hops away from her. You'll probably like this hand better. She extends her other hand and offers the, pa the pongo her gauntlet. He stares at it before turning away and hiding his face behind my leg. Boy, a pongo who refuses magic energy? Wait a minute, are you a mage? That's not a real occupation. I'm a student. Of magic? No, a full-time post-secondary student. She seems confused. You keep saying such strange things. She holds up her gauntlet and a faint pale light glows. It pulses rhythmically. As she holds it closer to me, it quickens until the pulses almost look like one long pulse. She blinks in surprise. Wait, this heightened energy activity, it's you? She analyzes the magic swirly thing on her gauntlet. I don't see a discharger on you. So then, how is it possible for you to have such a high magical energy reading? Are you carrying crystals? Is this a sting operation? No way, man, I'm clean. Huh? I don't do drugs. Her eyes narrow. She looks me over again. Never mind. It doesn't look like you're carrying crystals. Or anything, for that matter. I don't know what's going on right now. I was in the library studying for finals, and somehow I woke up here. So, are you from the Mage Academy? Okay, I think I've dozed off long enough. Time to wake up now. She blinks in confusion. You are awake. No, this is a dream. She frowns. I can assure you this is not a dream. Time for the pinch test, and that's when you pinch her, I hope. Could this actually be real? She definitely seems real, and that fall certainly hurt. I surreptitiously pinch myself and try to hide my wins. Yeah, I'm not convinced. Despite what you're saying, I'm not convinced. Mm, okay. She pulls her hand back and strikes me soundly on the arm. Ow. Still think this is a dream? Maybe. I'm less sure about it than before. She punches me again in the same spot. How about now? You might be onto something. Yep, you're right, this is not a dream. She gloats. I knew you'd eventually come to your senses. Or die trying. So, if this place isn't a dream, then where are we? We're in Meadow Hill. Meadow Hill? Where is that? It's a part of the Kingdom of Havenguard, of course. Havenguard? She looks at me like I'm crazy. It's the largest of the three kingdoms. Actually, where are you from? Oh, from New York. New York? Yeah, you know, part of the USA. U-S-A... USA? No, the United States of America. The United States of what? Never mind that for now. If you don't have any crystals, and you don't have a discharger, have you cast it recently? I shake my head. Then the amount of energy reading doesn't add up. She rests her chin in her hand as she thinks. A shiver runs through me as reality begins to set in. This really isn't a dream. 
Any ideas? She shakes her head. Maybe the Mage Academy can provide answers. Mage Academy? That's a start. Sounds good to me. How do I get there? Oh, it's in the center of Illumia. Where? Illumia. You follow the path going north until you arrive at the crossroads. Then you head... Her voice trails off as she notices my expression. I'm actually heading back there now. You can come along if you want. As I contemplate her offer, I look her over again. Can I trust her? Her posture is naturally straight and gives her an air of authority. She did mention she was out here on some sort of official investigation, plus she seems friendly enough. Besides, if I don't go with her, then I'll be wandering around on my own. The chances of me finding this mage academy alone without running into any unsavory people are not promising. I can't risk that. I need to find a way back home. I nod. Thanks. I'm Hero of Light, by the way. I'm Leanna. Leanna Dawn. Nice to meet you. I hold out my hand for her to shake, but she just stares at it. After keeping my hand out for a few seconds, I begin to feel awkward. Her expression changes to curiosity as she gingerly takes my hand. I grin broadly as I shake her hand firmly. She's a bit startled, but when her gaze meets, she matches my smile. It's nice to meet you, too. I look at her questioningly as she continues to shake my hand. She slips her hand away and blushes. Shall we get going, then? Ready when you are. Leanna nods and brings us back onto the path. Then she walks in the direction of the village. The pongo follows us, staying a step behind. We travel for quite some time together. It's been pretty silent. I wonder if I should say something. So what's the deal with the pongo thing? I glance behind us again. Just as expected, the pongo hops along. So, the pongo is still following us. Leanna glances back and grins. That's not too surprising. Why not? Pongos are attracted to magical energy. That's why it was so strange that it showed no interest in my manipulator. It's still following us, though. It's following you. <laughs> my readings showed you're full of magical energy. As far as the Pongo is concerned, you're a buffet. Huh. As I think over what Leanna said, I look at the Pongo one more time. This time, he looks right back at me and his eyes crinkle as he splits into a huge grin. Boy, boy! Uh... He leaps up into the air and reaches the height of my waist. Whoa. Boy. He jumps high again. Leanna giggles. I think he's tired of hopping. That sucks. I shrug. I'm not forcing him to follow us. I know, but he's not going to leave. Not when he's found such an abundance of energy in one place. It's like how a moth is attracted to a light, he just can't help himself. Is that supposed to be a pun? Then he can just keep on hopping. Leanna's gaze softens as she watches the pongo. The poor guy must be really exerting himself to keep up. I look back at him and he looks expectantly at me. Poi, poi. When I show no intention of carrying him, the pongo lowers his eyes dejectedly and seems to fold into himself. Poi. I have a heart of steel, encased in ice. Nice try, but that kind of stuff doesn't work on me. His little voice wavers. Leanna gives me a glance I can't read. Is she disappointed in me? Then she refocuses on the pongo. Are you tired, little pongo? The pongo pauses, then shakes himself off, and a determination returns to his voice. Boy, boy. Are you sure you're okay? He jumps a step closer. Alright, then let's get moving. Leanna nods, and we keep going. Occasionally, I catch her sneaking glances back at the pongo. So, why are you here? So, not that I'm complaining, but what exactly were you doing out in the field? The field? Where you found me. Oh, there have been rumors of high energy readings around Meadow Hill, so I was sent to investigate. I had already checked out the surrounding area, and there'd been no clear source for all that excess energy... until today. When you met me? She nods. I hadn't been in the field for very long before you found me, though. Hmm. You might be a byproduct of whatever created the energy spike in the first place. What do you think that was? I'm not sure. 
I haven't seen readings of that level before. The Mage Academy should be able to help explain. I wonder what it takes to become a mage. So, besides magic, what else does the Mage Academy teach? Oh, all the basics. How to use a manipulator, how to control your energy, the many usages and differences between crystals and spheres. Crystal energy and spheres. What exactly is this crystal stuff you keep mentioning? You mean the difference between crystals and crystal spheres? Well, when we refer to crystals, we mean the raw crystals, whereas crystal spheres are the usable refined state. So, if you're familiar with Legend of Heroes, think Sepith and Quartz. That's helpful, but I meant crystals in general. She stares at me and narrows her eyes as if trying to judge if I'm serious. It's the power source for, well, everything. I look blankly at her. You don't use crystals where you come from? No. Her mouth falls open and she looks at me in bewilderment. With no crystals? What else do you use to power things? Lots of stuff. I count off on my fingers. The sun, water, wind, nuclear fission, fossil fuels like coal and oil. Her eyes widen with each item I list. She's about to speak, but I'm not finished. Geothermal, waves, tidal, hydrogen... Okay, okay. She shakes her head incredulously. I get it. You have your own methods of energy. Many, many methods. Leanna's eyes sparkle as she falls into a pensive silence. A small smile plays at her lips while she considers what I've said. I might have overwhelmed her a little, but she actually seems interested in all our methods for harnessing energy. So, glove. Without seeming too suspicious, I try to get a better look at her gauntlet. What with that thing she was doing with it earlier? Leanna notices me staring and shifts uncomfortably. Are you okay? Yeah, I was just curious about your gauntlet. Oh, my manipulator? Sure. All mages have a manipulator. It's how we use energy to interact with the elements around us. Wait, you mean you can cast spells? I suppose that's one way to phrase it. Oh, can you show me something cool? Um, like what? Cast Magic Missile. Can you cast Magic Missile at the darkness? She furrows her brows. That's not possible. I look her straight in the eyes. You're right. She's very clearly confused by my response and is at a loss for words. As for the sounds of wildlife as we continue walking, I can hear the usual song of birds and the faint whoosh of wings flapping in the air. Occasionally there's a rustle amid the trees and I even swan at the bugs buzzing around my eyes. It all feels very familiar, reminding me of home. Leanna clears her throat. So, you're from USA? USA, but yeah. Which kingdom is that in? Uh... How should I phrase this? In the Kingdom of North America. She frowns and scratches her neck. I'm a little ashamed to say I'm not familiar with that place. Where is it? On Earth? Earth? Okay, time to take a different approach. Let me see if I can explain. Alright, tell me, where are we right now? In Meadow Hill. And where is that? In the Kingdom of Havengard. And where's Havengard? In the land of Asaria. And what is that a part of? Terra, of course. Okay, so Terra is my Earth. She pauses as my words sink in, then she gasps. Wait, are you not from Terra? From what I've heard so far, I am not. She looks concerned. How did you get here? That's what I'm hoping the Mage Academy can tell me. Right, but I mean... How did you come to Meadow Hill specifically? Do you remember anything before you were in the field? I think back. I was studying in the library and I'd been extra tired because that's the same day I have my evening class. And I still remember everything about me in my past. Yeah. Hmm. Well, at least we know you don't have amnesia. Or spiky hair, because that would be really awkward. I nod. She lapses back into silence, looking thoughtful. I have a lot to think about myself. My head is swimming with everything I've learned so far. Although there are some similarities between Terra and Earth, I've only scratched the surface on all the differences. I really hope the Mage Academy can help explain what is going on, and more importantly, how I can get back home. I look back and see the Pongo face planted on the ground. Pongo, what happened? 
It rolls back up right and looks away. Boy, boy. Leanna grins. Were you trying to eat and hop at the same time? Boy. Is that embarrassment I sense? Leanna can't hold back her giggles any longer, and her laughter makes me chuckle. Boy. The pongo huffs and pouts. I'm sorry. We weren't laughing at you. We were laughing with you, wink wink. Boy. As the pongo shakes the dirt off himself, Leanna and I resume walking. The sun dips in the sky and bathes the tips of the trees in a soft glow. My feet ache in protest with each step I take, and my eyes are tight, and my legs are tight from all the walking. Finally, we come upon the perimeter of the village. Leanna grins as she leads me through the gates. Here we are, Meadow Hill Village. I take the time to catch my breath and discreetly rest my burning muscles. Leanna seems hardly affected by the long trek. How was this close? I thought you said this place was close. It is. It's only a half a day's walk. I wait for her to say she's joking, but she's completely serious. How was that close? We should have just used Uber. I'm sorry? Or, I mean, Ober. I shake my head. Nothing. She cocks her head curiously, then shrugs. Let's continue. We can rest at the inn tonight. As she resumes walking, I ignore my screaming legs and follow her. The village is still bustling with people even at this time of day. I suppose they're getting in their last errands before nightfall. For the most part, everyone seems to focus on their own tasks. They barely glance at Leanna, but when their gazes are drawn to me, they don't look away. In fact, their steps slow and they crane their necks as we pass. Now I know how an animal feels at the zoo. Leanna overhears my muttering and watches the people around us. It's your clothes. They're very peculiar. At least I'm wearing some. What I'm wearing is normal where I'm from. Even though the stairs are directed at me, Leanna seems equally uncomfortable. Okay, new plan. Let's stop by the shops before they close. We don't need to draw attention to ourselves. I instinctively pat my back pocket where I keep my wallet. I doubt they'll accept card here, or dollars. I don't have any money. That's okay. I'll take care of it. That's really generous of you. Thank you, I really appreciate it. It's understandable given your circumstances. I'll pay you back once I can. Leanna smiles and nods. Leanna changes directions and leads me towards an adjacent street. There are rows of coin shops lining both sides of the road. I read the signs as we walk by. Edward's Apothecary. Blackstone Forge, Dragon Scale Armory. Hmm. What is it? I was just thinking how convenient it is that everything's in English here. English? I should have expected the question based on how our previous conversations have gone, but I'm still a little taken aback. It's what we're speaking now. We're speaking common. What? Leanna pauses in front of a shop and peers inside. Satisfied, she motions for me to follow. Never mind. Come on in. We're here. I step into the shop, and the first thing I notice is the overpoweringly musty smell of leather. It's not surprising, considering the walls are lined with different types of leatherware. A small elderly man emerges from the back. A pair of round glasses sits on his nose, and an apron hangs around his neck. Welcome. Please, take a look around. His smile falters when he notices me. Leanna clears her throat. We're looking for a new wardrobe for my friend here. Yes, yes, of course. The shopkeeper blinks back to reality and resumes his pitch. Well, you've come to the right place. We tan our hides and stitch the pieces ourselves. You won't find any finer quality than here. Leanna smiles politely and strolls towards the selections. I check out two seemingly identical leather vests, both of which are marked at different prices. I really can't see a difference between the two. Maybe they boast different stats. Hey, Leanna. She turns around. Which one of these will increase my... Focus. She blinks. Do you mean to find an outfit that's not too distracting for you? Uh... So, none of these raise any stats? Leanna gives me a weird look. Do your clothes where you come from raise stats? Yes. Only if you consider cool points to be a stat. 
She looks just as confused as before. Never mind. She smiles as we continue perusing. One by one, Leanna and I pick out my new outfit. Once all the pieces have been chosen, she goes to haggle with the shopkeeper. I tune out of their discussion and watch the people passing by. Their clothing are simple in design, meant to be more functional than aesthetic. To my surprise, everybody walks around armed. This village doesn't seem dangerous, but looks can be deceiving. Why don't you get changed now? There's a space in the back to give you some privacy. I nod and take the clothes from her. Once I've ensured privacy, I quickly get changed. Luckily, these clothes have pockets. I can just transfer everything over. I pull my wallet, deck of cards, and loose change. Next is my phone. I try to turn it on just to see if it'll work, but it doesn't react. The battery must be dead. I get the feeling they don't have wall chargers here. Shrugging it off, I slip my phone into my pocket too. When I emerge, Leanna gives me a once-over. How do I look? She grins and nods in satisfaction. Wow, look at you! Just like a native. This look suits you. I match her grin. Thanks. Let's go find the inn now. She heads out of the shop and I follow her. Actually, maybe we can stop by the armory. She pauses and looks curiously at me. Armory? You want to get a weapon? Her question is careful, cautious. The goal is to blend in, right? It's weird that a person wearing leather armor is traveling unarmed. I look like a hostage or something. Hmm, you do have a point. Plus, it could come in handy. Why do I not like the sound of that? Do you know how to use a weapon? Again, although her voice holds no hostility, I can sense her caution. I practice kendo competitively. She blinks. It's a type of sword fighting where I come from. I see. Leanna falls silent as she gazes out into the street. After an extended pause, she nods. We head to the forge where rows of blades ranging from long swords to short daggers hang from the wall. All the blades look fairly plain, but the steel edges glint dangerously amidst the warm glow of the forge. Unlike the previous shopkeeper, the metalsmith ignores us as he pounds out a red-hot blade. Sparks jump from the clanging metal, reminding me of fireflies. Leanna lets me browse the swords. I reach for one that catches my eyes. As I gently remove it from the shelf, I miscalculate its weight and drop it. The steel scratches the ground with a sharp screech. The Melsmith pauses in his work to glower a warning. Leanna looks on in shock. Careful! I quickly write the sword back up and grip it tightly. Leanna now watches me with intrigue. Is this the first time you've held a sword? <laughs> I lift, bro. Hey, I can handle the sword just fine. I'm just really sore because of all the lifting I did before coming here. Leanna's expression is hard to read. Lifting. Yeah, bro, I lift. I squeeze my biceps and take a practice swing with the sword. Feels good, man. Leanna stares blankly. I swing again and the movement flows naturally. As the sword cuts through the air with a sharp twing, I can't help but admire how smoothly it slices. This is high quality craftsmanship. Let's go with this one. As before, Leanna discusses with the shopkeeper. When she returns, I strap the sword to my belt. We make one more stop to gather supplies for our travel. By the time we're finished, the sun is set and darkness blankets the city. The town is aglow with soft lights glint. Let's see. I think that would make more sense as the town is aglow as soft lights glint from within the houses and the lampposts on the streets. As we pass by a lamppost, I peek inside and see a small crystal shining brilliantly. Using the lights to guide us, we find the inn. I take a seat at one of the crew tables while Leanna talks to the innkeeper behind the bar. There are a scattering of other patrons, mostly men who sit alone nursing a tankard of what I assume to be ale. I stifle a yawn. Now that I've had a chance to sit down, I feel the full weight of my fatigue. Luckily, Leanna returns and hands me a key. This is your room for the night. It's right next to mine. Thanks. She nods. They should be coming out with our dinners soon. Then we should get to sleep. We have an early start tomorrow. My stomach grumbles in anticipation. Sorry. 
Leanna smiles as she sits in the empty stool next to mine. Our meals arrive and I stare at the bowl before me. It's a goopy, thick stew that looks about as appetizing as dog food, but it smells pretty good. What is this? It's stew. What kind of stew? Rabbit. Hmm. A brief image of a cute fluffy bunny flashes across my eyes. Is something wrong? <laughs> now nah, we're good. I'm all about trying new foods. Nothing's wrong. This is fine, thanks. I take a tentative bite of my stew. How is it? Damn. So hoping there's some sort of Bugs Bunny joke that you worked in here. Adequate. It'll keep me full, that's all I need. Leanna nods. I finish eating and Leanna clears her bowl, and the two of us head upstairs. She pauses in front of her room and I stop in front of mine. Good night. Good night. I'm about to enter my room when I hear a small voice. Polly? Looking down, I see the pongo back at my feet. Now that I think about it, ever since we entered the village, he's been awfully silent. Have you been following us this whole time, or did he lose us and find us again? The pongo blinks twice and bounces. Boy, boy. Pongos aren't exactly welcomed everywhere. Why is that? Well, they absorb the energy around them, including crystals which are used to light lampposts or other similar items. I can see how that would be bad. I think this guy knew to stay out of sight once we came in here. What if someone sees him here? As long as he doesn't stray too close to a crystal, he'll be fine. People only make a fuss when it looks like their crystal might be drained. Got it. She reaches towards the pongo. Do you want to sleep with me tonight? Boy! The pongo snuggles against my leg. Leanna sighs. I thought as much. She opens her door and flashes me one last smile. Sleep well. She disappears into her room. I open my door and step through. The pongo perks up. Boy, boy. No, my room. Nope, this is my room. I close the door before the pongo can get in, and I hear a muffled thump and poi. He'll be fine. He's a wild... animal, I guess? He doesn't need to sleep in a room. I open the window to let in the cool breeze and yawn widely. As I collapse onto the bed, it isn't long before I'm fast asleep. So we kind of have a whole Luke von Fabra thing with Mew going on, I guess. A knock on my door jolts me awake. I sit straight up in bed and barely notice a tiny yelp as the pongo tumbles to the floor. Hello? The knocking stops. It's Leanna! Are you about ready? I rub my eyes and blink at the feeble rays of light outside. What time is it? It's past dawn. We need to get a move on if we want to make a good time. Dawn? There's no good reason anyone should be awake at this hour. I attempt to lay back down on my bed when the knocking starts again. Alright, alright, I'll be there in a minute. The noise stops. I yawn and stretch, then notice the pongo on the floor. How did you get in here? The pongo blinks at me with innocent eyes. Boy, boy. The crisp morning air floats through my open window, making me shiver. Wait a minute, did he... Did you somehow make your way outside and go around the back of the inn, scale up the side of the building like some kind of jello ninja and climb through the window? His eyes crinkle again as he grins. Boy. I have to admit, that's pretty impressive. I push myself to my feet and begin getting dressed. Once I've grabbed all my things, I push open the door and nearly collide with Leanna. Whoa. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Leanna nods, then leads the way out of the inn. I follow her through town as we head north. It's a lot quieter than we first arrived as the town gradually begins to wake up. We don't run into too many people on the street, although the shops aren't open yet. I can see many of the shopkeepers preparing for the day. Right before we reach the edge of the town, a guard stops us. There's been heightened bandit activity reported on these roads. Leanna's brows crease. Are the roads closed? No, but until we get a handle on the bandit activity, we're advising everyone to stay in town. We can't stay. Where are you headed? We're headed to Illumia. The guard notices the sigil on, the sigil on Leanna's manipulator. You're a mage knight? She nods. As the guard turns his focus to me, I draw attention to the blade on my hip. 
He nods gruffly, then moves out of the way. Just be careful out there. Thank you. She motions for me to follow her. Once we're back on the familiar dirt path, I take one last look at Meadow Hill Village before refocusing on the road ahead of me. Our trek along the path is peaceful. The forest gradually awakens with birdsong and the scuttling of woodland animals. Having grown up in the city, the sounds of nature still startle me and I glance at every rustle of the leaves. Leanna, though, seems unfazed. Her eyes routinely survey her surroundings. Suddenly she freezes. I nearly bump into her. What the? Shh. I fall silent as she listens. When she speaks, her voice is a whisper. Did you hear that? I strain my ears, listening for anything out of place. Then I hear the voices among the trees. Bandits. A strangled scream pierces the air, scaring a flock of birds into flight. Someone might be in danger! Her previous caution abandoned, Leanna sprints towards the sound and I follow at her heels. We both take cover as the trees open up, revealing a man in a trench coat surrounded by five bandits. One more bandit lies motionless on the ground. Upon seeing their fallen comrade, the bandits all unsheath their weapons. Three of them hold longswords and two of them point guns. The trench-coated man doesn't stir. His dark hair falls over his eyes and I can't see his face. You won't get away from us this time. Take him out. The man pushes open his coat and draws two guns as the bandits converge. Leanna sets her jaw. Stay here. As soon as her words fall from the her as soon as the words fall from her lips, she races out from the trees. Her hair whips behind her and her white coattails billow in a graceful arc. She moves faster than any human, as if the air is pushing her forward instead of dragging her down. Her gauntlet hand clenches and a blue sphere grows, then disappears as she smashes her fist into the nearest bandit. He flies away from her and crashes against a tree before crumpling into a heap. A maid knight? She must be with him. Or she's after the bounty. Take her out too! The mysterious man fires a trail of purple blasts at the bandits, catching one of them in the chest. Leanna deflects the sword from another bandit with her own blade. I can't just sit here and do nothing, I have to help! Ignoring Leanna's command, I unsheath my sword and charge into battle. Minigame will be available in future builds, so I wonder if this is going to be like Ace Academy. Let's take a dive. Leanna breathes heavily as she surveys the bodies around her. She glances at me and the stranger who's still standing. Anyone hurt? I do a gentle pat down to myself and wince at my bruises. Nothing major. Leanna nods and she fidgets with her manipulator. The man stays silent as he inspects his gun. Now that I have a better look at him, I realize that he, although his fierce scowl makes him seem tough, he doesn't look that much older than me. His hair has a habit of falling around his eyes, but as he pushes it back, I notice a long scar cut across one eye. Once satisfied, he tucks his gun back into his belt and gets to his feet. He nods at us. Thanks. Then he turns away. Wait! He pauses. Where are you headed? Why? There might be more bandits around. We should team up if we're going in the same direction. Safety in numbers. He studies us in stony silence, then his gaze flicks to her manipulator and he relaxes slightly. Where are you going? We're headed to Illumia. Me too. Leanna nods. You're from the Mage Guild? Yes. I'm Leanna. I'm Hero. Zack. Boy boy. All of us glance at the little blue pongo who seemingly popped out of nowhere. And, uh, this is our little friend. I see. Boy! The pongo blinks at Zack, who stares him down. The pongo bounces uncertainly. Boy? Zack's unblinking stare never wavers, so the pongo scoots behind my leg for safety. Now that introductions are over, let's get moving. Zack waits for us to collect our things, and once we're all set, we head back onto the road. Leanne and I lead the way, the pongo keeping pace with us while Zack hangs a few steps behind us. So, what type of gun is Zack carrying? You mean his discharger? What's a discharger? I hear a sound behind us. Zack raises an eyebrow when I turn to look at him. Did you hit your head or something? Leanna looks a little uncomfortable. He's not exactly from around here. Zack crosses his arms. I see. There's a pause. 
So, what uh, discharger? It's a weapon that uses crystal spheres to power it. So it is a gun. Maybe? The spheres are the bullets. It's kind of like a mag... It's kind of the magazine in some sense, because it's used to fire bullets, or in this case, bolts of energy. And it looks uncertain. Although it made sense in my head, I can see why she might be confused. Never mind. I got it. Thanks. Sure. She smiles. I feel Zack's gaze on me, but his expression is hard to read. Leanna, I saw you during the fight. How were you able to move so fast? Oh, I cast wind magic to manipulate my movements. So, like putting on a speed buff? They're small adjustments. Like shifting the draft to move me forward. Or using a breeze to help lift me during jumps. Damn, that sounds awesome. She grins. The next time you're lagging behind, I'll use my wind to give you a little boost. That would be amazing. I can already imagine myself running like the wind. Leanna seems pleased by my reaction. How did Zack know you were in the Mage Guild? He saw my emblem. She lifts up her arm and points to the sigil on her manipulator. What exactly does the Mage Guild do? We investigate any type of magical anomaly. The Mage Guild in Havengard is actually headquartered in Illumia. Sort of like a police force. Leanna furrows her brow. Police? Like how detectives go out in the field and solve mysteries. Um, a little like that. It now makes sense as to why both the guard and Meadowhill Village and Zack relax after seeing Leanna's emblem. Well, looks like the guard was telling the truth. There are definitely bandits on this road. Yeah. There's something in her voice which makes me think she doesn't completely agree. What is it? It's just... well, for bandits, they were pretty well equipped. She stares hard at Zack, but he doesn't react. What does that mean? Are they not bandits? Diana continues to look at Zack. I'm not sure. They were bandits. She looks sharply at Zack, obviously caught off guard. Sure. That didn't sound too convincing. The subject drops, but I still feel a little uneasy. If those guys weren't bandits, then who were they? And why were they attacking Zack? The questions circle my mind as the conversation lulls to silence. Leanna leads the way, though she seems to have something on her mind. Zack trails from behind. He remains on heightened alert. We travel together for quite some time with no further interruptions. I can feel my legs start to burn from all the walking. Leanna squints at the sky. We should make camp before it gets dark. Zack nods. There's a good spot up ahead which hides us from view. It'll still give us visibility on any intruders, though. Sounds good. Zack leads the way, and soon we reach the clearing. The three of us get to work setting up camp. I roll out my bedroll near the campfire and notice how thinly it spreads on the ground. Can this thing really be comfortable? Guess there's only one way to find out. I lie down on the bedroll and place my hands behind my head. This isn't as bad as I thought. A yawn escapes my lips. I could definitely fall asleep here. My gaze lingers on the night sky above. The moon hangs in the inky sky, dotted with so many pinpricks of silver light. They sparkle vividly as if trying to chase away the dark. I breathe out a breath in wonder. I never knew that stars could shine so brightly. I try to pick out a few constellations, but the star patterns above are unfamiliar. What are you looking at? I quickly sit up at the sound of Leanna's voice. She holds two steaming bowls in her hands. I accept one of the bowls with a smile as she sits beside me. Just admiring the sky. This place is really beautiful. Back where I live, you don't get to see so many stars. How come? Light pollution. Our cities are filled with so much light that it drowns out the stars. Leanna gazes thoughtfully at the sky. Right. It's a little harder to see the stars in town than it is out here. I shake my head. It's not the same. Some nights, I don't see the stars at all. Her eyes widen in surprise. Then she places her chin in her hands. A night sky without stars. She looks at me. What's your world like? Eh, more or less the same. Bandits roaming the streets. Lack of police presence. What can I say? Chicago's a wonderful place to live. 
It's kind of the same. It's kind of like here, but kind of different. She stares at me, waiting for me to elaborate. We don't use crystals or have magic, and we definitely don't have pongos. I glance at the pongos, snoozing beside me. Leanna smiles and his soft snores. But we do have forests and towns. We speak languages and have our own versions of academies and shops and guilds. We also have weapons and martial arts. Like Kendo. Yep. That sounds like it'd be an interesting place to visit. I wonder what it's like to live in a world with no crystals. She tilts her head back and returns her gaze to the sky. Underneath the moonlight, her pale skin seems to glow amidst the darkness. Her face softens as she smiles. You're right. The stars really are beautiful. We fall into a comfortable silence as we enjoy the tranquility of the night. After we finish eating and cleaning up, Zack approaches us. It's getting late. Leanna nods. I'll take first watch so you can rest. All right. I'll take second watch. I guess I should see me with third. Zack stares unblinkingly at me while Leanna coughs nervously. That's okay. We had an early start, and I'm sure you're tired. We should rest up and sleep through the night. Do you guys not trust me? It almost sounds like you guys don't trust me. Although I try to keep my tone light and joking, Leanna looks guilty. No! That's not... I mean, it's not that we don't trust... Yes. She looks sharply at Zack. His arms are crossed, but his expression doesn't change. Seriously? Zack nods towards Leanna. She's part of the Mage Guild, so I know she won't pull any tricks. I don't know anything about you. I'm sorry. As the fire in my mind debates, I realize Zack has a point. I've given him no reason to trust me. If I were in his shoes, I'd be just as cautious. I nod. Alright, I suppose that's fair. I better get to sleep then. Good night. Good night. Zack nods. Leanna flashes me one last smile before crawling into her bedroll. As she lies down, Zack positions himself against a tree and takes a seat. We'll talk to him. If we're going to be traveling together, I should make an effort to get to know what kind of person he is. I walk over to Zack. Hey. Hmm? Mind if I sit? He gestures for me to join him, so I do so. Obviously, you'll have to lead the conversation. So, how's the weather? Zack stares at me. Alright, let's switch gears. Are you a cat or a dog person? Is this going anywhere? I sigh. I'm trying to build some trust here, but you've got Mimi halfway. Zack looks away. Great, I guess he doesn't want to talk. Dog. What? I prefer canines. Cool. The silence creeps in again. So we're all going to Illumia. Yep. What brings you there? I'm meeting someone. Oh, a friend? Someone from work. What do you do? I'm a mercenary. This explains so much. It all makes sense now. What does? Everything about you. The angst, that hard-boiled exterior, the frequent cold shoulder. You're totally the broody main character of one of my JRPGs. What are you talking about? He stares at me and I smirk. That's exactly how one of those MCs would react. So, why are you going to Illumia? Leanna's taking me to the Mage Academy. He studies me again. Are you a mage? You don't have a manipulator. I shake my head. No, I'm looking for answers. He nods in understanding and doesn't pry. Although I try to stop it, a yawn escapes. You should get some sleep. We have an early start in the morning. Sounds familiar? I push myself to standing. Good night. He nods. I lay down in my bedroll and scooch around to get comfortable. I try closing my eyes to sleep, but something still doesn't feel right. Oh yeah, I need a pillow. Seeing up, I look around for anything I can use. My gaze falls on the pongo, who now rests beside Leanna. Get to work over here. This is happening. Psst, pongo. The pongo blinks open bleary eyes, but perks up when he notices me. Come here. He happily bounces over. When he comes within reach, I make a grab for him and plunk him in my bedroll. He squeaks in protest as I lay my head on him. Like a slippery eel, he wiggles himself free and bounds back to Leanna's side. No, Pongo! 
He glares suspiciously at me. He turns his back at me and cuddles against Leanna. I sigh. Well, I guess I have no choice but to make do with being pillowless. Lying back down in my bedroll, I close my eyes and eventually drift to sleep. And now the bad news for you guys. So I'm going to put the break in here. I'm not going to probably have another one of these for Friday, but I may look into having another one for the weekend. Main thing is... I don't know how far the early access goes, I don't know how much want the devs want to be shown, stuff like that. So I'm going to stop here, you can kind of see the premise of the game, and we'll go from here in the future. I was kind of hoping to meet Noir in this video, but we'll have to hopefully run into her in the next one. But in the meantime, I'm the Hero of Light, thanks for watching, and goodbye.